We all use the word energy, but what does it mean? Energy is the ability to do useful work to bring about change. The three major forms of energy from a chemist's point of view are first, the internal energy of each substance, second, the external work due to atomic and molecular charges, and third, the exchange of heat with the surroundings. One calorie is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree centigrade. Nutritionists use a large C, which stands for kilocalories. Beware, this is a thousand times the small C calorie. An adult needs two to three thousand large C calories a day meaning two to three million small C calories each day. How much water could be heated up one degree centigrade with the energy you consume for breakfast? Another unit for measuring energy is the joule. One joule is the amount of energy required to raise a one kilogram object 10 centimeters against the force of gravity. One joule is equal to 0 0.239 calories, and one calorie is equal to 4.18 joules. In chemistry, the most important form of potential energy is chemical energy. Chemical energy is stored in chemical substances, for example, in foods such as carbohydrates and fats. Energy can be released when the substances take part in a chemical reaction. The chemical energy is the internal energy because it is the consequent of all the motions of particles and forces between particles. The chemical field of thermodynamic studies the relationship of heat and disorder and calculates an overall free energy. Hydrocarbon fuels like methane burn by reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water, following the principles of thermodynamics. When energy is released during the course of a chemical reaction, the reaction is said to be exothermic because heat leaves the system. The combustion of methane gas releases 50.1 kilojoules per gram of energy, or the equivalent of 802.3 kilojoules of energy per mole of methane burned. Although there is a thermodynamic drive for combustion, that leads to a lower thermodynamic state. It does not begin without a spark. This spark is called the activation energy. The activation energy is the energy required to initiate the reaction. This slide shows an exothermic reaction in which the energy of the products is less than the reactants, so energy is given off from the reaction in the form of heat. On the other hand, endothermic reactions will have more stored potential energy in the products than in the reactants. The change of energy will be positive because the energy is coming from the surroundings into the system and the products feel cold. Endothermic reactions also require an activation energy. The study of reaction rates is called chemical kinetics. The rate of a chemical reaction can be affected by many factors such as its activation energy, the nature of the reaction, concentration of the reactants, temperature, and presence of a catalyst. Many catalysts 
provide a surface on which reactants can meet. This changes the reaction pathway and lowers the activation energy. For example, when the products of an incomplete combustion, such as aldehydes which were formed, are poured over fine particles of a transition metal catalyst in your car's catalytic converter, the reaction can take place readily at a lower temperature. In this way, more carbon dioxide and less toxic aldehydes are emitted. Another example of a catalyst is the ability of chlorine atoms to catalyze the destruction of ozone in the atmosphere. Notice how coal and gasoline have a greater energy content than wood. Ethanol already is partially oxidized, like wood, its energy content is lower than methane or propane. Hydrogen as a fuel can be considered an example of green chemistry. Most fuels are composed of hydrocarbons. The exceptions are the pure hydrogen molecule and nuclear fission and fusion processes. You are most familiar with hydrocarbons as a fossil fuel because they have powered human society and enabled the industrial revolution, making our lives easier but unsustainable. We'll discuss hydrocarbons more in other modules. In this slide, we see coal. Coal is a complex mixture of substances, although not a single compound. Coal can be approximated by the chemical formula carbon-135, hydrogen-96, oxygen-9, nitrogen-1, sulfur-1. Estimates of the U.S. coal reserve are expected to provide up to 150 to 200 year supply of energy. Coal was king until it was largely replaced by petroleum, which is much easier to transport in pipelines. One of the drawbacks to petroleum is that it must be refined before use. What do you think of the Keystone Pipeline proposal for the U.S. and Canada? Petroleum is composed of hundreds of compounds. These hydrocarbons are classified based on characteristics such as mass and boiling point. Petroleum compounds are separated by distillation in refineries. Distillation is an ancient method first developed by alchemists, where a mixture is boiled and the components are separated by their different boiling points. Notice that the al asphalt you live on, the sneakers you wear, and the plastic devices you use every day are made of refined and modified crude oil. Most oil is used for transportation or heating, while field stocks from crude oil are used to make many products, including drugs, fabrics, and plastics. While northern regions have extensive fossil fuel reserves, the north is also looking to diversify its energy sources to more sustainable and renewable fuels like biodiesel and ethanol. Another type of energy is nuclear energy. Nuclear fission is responsible for 15 to 20 percent of the world's energy usage. As atoms split apart or decay, they emit nuclear radiation that leads to heat.
The three types of nuclear radiation are alpha, beta, and gamma. They are called ionizing radiation. When these high energy particles and photons hit matter, they strip electrons away, creating positively charged ions. Alpha particles, which have a mass of four atomic mass units, do not penetrate into other matter well. Its large mass makes it likely to collide with other atoms and molecules. Alpha particles are strong ionizers and are very dangerous if they enter the body. There are four basic decay series in nature. Note that uranium-238 decay series, shown here, leads to radon, a gas, and then eventually to a non-radioactive isotope of lead, lead-206. Nuclear fission is the splitting of a large nucleus into smaller ones. The sum of the masses of the fragments from a fission reaction is less than the original mass, so energy must have been released. The missing mass has been converted into energy according to Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared. Ionizing radiation can ionize water, which is common in all living organisms. Ionization has its most immediate effect on growing tissues like hair and blood. Effects to growing organisms like children can be very subtle and not be noticed for years or decades. Eventually, all radioactive isotopes decay to non-radioactive ones. The time for one half of the mass of a radioactive isotope to decay is called its half-life. As a rule of thumb, radiation emissions are generally at background levels after 10 half-lives. Currently, spent nuclear fuel is stored on site at power plants underwater to keep it cool. A long-term storage facility was created in Nevada. Recently, the government decided to change the plan, but a new one has not been agreed upon yet. All fuels have benefits and risks. Sustainability may have to include less e energy-intensive industries in the future.